Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a B and O style millivolt meter. I mean, the reason why I call this B and O style is because yeah, you can look at this case. It's the same size, width, depth. I mean, it the size and case and the whole way that it is made. I mean, this is definitely the same kind of case design. So how is that possible? I've never seen this case design exactly like that. And then it has not been an B a B&O kind of unit, but this looks like a DIY project. I look uh, forward to open this and see if this is really the case. See what I can see here? It looks a little bit like seven segments, but the way that they shine on the front, I think it's Beckman. So it's a neon um, kind of sec uh, seven segment, not a Nixie, but uh, at least a neon filled. So that means it could be from 1965 to 1975, sort of more or less about that. So I think we should open it before we power this up. And also look at the color of the cable. And I don't know if you can imagine the color here that is probably smoke this is from cigarettes uh, and it smells really, really like an ashtray, I must say. <laughs> Not too nice. Yeah, that's just how it is. We are, of course, inside. This is definitely B&O style case. And the smell is absolutely terrible. Oh, the ashtray stink is powerful. Holy moly. And uh, see, there was a sticker right there, and that round sticker said, says, accepted by JE in 73. <laughs> that is very close to my first guess. And so, so, I mean, this is just a one of these readout units you can buy as a plug-in for some sort of uh, yeah, systems. So it's a data technology corporation, yada yada yada. And here's the model, 3312. I don't know, what can we get from this serial number? See, it's running on 230 volts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there you have it. And then there's just a voltage divider. Is that, yes, see, those are high precision resistors. I mean, this is probably safe to, to turn this on, right? <laughs> I don't know. I think I should fix this a little bit, right? <laughs> what is the safety distance here? Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> no, not really. Yeah, I better fix this first. And this is definitely why I love to do these inspections. That could have been a nice little... Those are thin, right? It's not going to take any of my fuses, but anyway... <laughs> Nasty. So let's try the first uh, power-up test and see what happens. Oy, 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 oy. It blinks a lot on the video. I'm so sad about that because in reality uh, I don't see this with my eyes and that is definitely Neon uh, Beckman. So they are um, blinking by 50 hertz or 100 hertz or something like that. It's definitely multiplexed uh, as well, right? And uh, maybe I can fix this. I don't know how can f how can I fix this with the video. Maybe I can change the timing. No, I cannot. 
Let me get more dark so it will... No, that's really bad. This is super, super annoying. So I was able to change some video settings. And look at that different uh, timing here. So there's a little bit of blur. Oh, and it is sensitive. So I think this should be millivolts, right? So this is 20 millivolts. Okay, let's go to 2000. Oh, it's also controlling some interesting. So if this is 2000, I will give you. Hang on, this is very, very difficult. I think I will give you two, uh, a one volt, okay? Ugh. Let's get in here. Oh no, that is not working. Okay, so it's volts. What you see here is volts. So this is misleading. This is only the instrument. Okay, so this is the 20 volt range and it's probably gonna... Yeah, oh, there's a broken digit. But that's probably gonna um, come back after a little bit of time. If we just look a little bit, I think I can see that it's growing and growing. And this is normal. Uh, for old uh, Beckman displays, you just need to give them a little bit of time and then the cathode will um, re, uh, I don't know, rebuild itself or re-clean itself some, somehow. I will just leave this on until tomorrow and we're going to see if this is any better. It's using um, 4.3 watts and I'm quite happy with this. This is a very, very accurate. You see, 1007. And I didn't verify this uh, yet, but here it says 1008. But we've got, of course, some method to test this. But I mean, so far. So this is two volts. So this should be 200, right? Let's go down to 100 millivolts. And then, I mean, all the ranges seems to be working. Interesting. You think this can do 2000 volts with these and uh, distance and all that kind of stuff? This is probably just the range. I mean, I don't dare to give it that much. But so far it works in the switches, actually. Quite a Beside the smell, which is really terrible, this instrument is really nice and cute. Yeah. I'll come back tomorrow and see what happens with the one volt here. And then we'll see. Like that. I'll probably give it 1.1. And then we'll just leave it like that. I have a big problem today to make the picture nice and stable instead of blinkity blinkity. Look at that. But I think I got a little bit more courage on the cats out here and you can really see how dirty the acrylic front is. I think this is due to smoking, but the whole unit is really, really nasty. I think I want to try and get inside this box. Let's see what's in there and then I can clean this and probably we're going to get a nice and beautiful picture out of that. So that is definitely a neon displays um, Beckman SP what three five something it says here. Here, oi. Why can't you focus, you sad? What SP three five one, and the other one is uh, of course different uh, three five two. So that works with high voltage and if you, I don't know if, yes, I think we can actually show this. Can you see there's a, like a compartment in here that is sealed and then there's another one for this digit, another one for this digit and again, so there's a, I think it's this 
little piece of metal that is sort of flexible so uh, when they glued on the glass they have a weakly conductive uh, treatment to the glass and that connects to that piece of metal and this is of course the common anode for each of the four segments so it's obviously uh, multiplexed we got some drivers here what i find a little bit funny is um the date codes See, it says uh, 76 and 76. And then it's the same with more or less all of the parts 75 is that one. But everything else seems to be 76. And uh, how is that possible to have this unit accepted in 73? So something here is a little bit weird with the date codes. This is probably not correct, right? Um, the circuit board here, oh, look at that, so obviously something here is running really warm and the inside of this plastic here definitely needs a lot of cleaning so I'll try and clean it up and see if we can get a nice and beautiful picture on this one again so that is uh, I think it's a dual slope 80 converter and it's time based and that is why you have a crystal here and this is why it is so um, accurate. I think it's one of these capacitors like that one. That would, be, that would make sense on this one. Uh, this is a little trimmer here for accuracy so you have a hole. We have two different holes here. So one is probably for zero and the other one is for gain. So that means it's in this area here, and we have some of these uh, capacitors probably... Well, I don't know exactly where is the... Oui, what is that? There's a capacitor that's lifted. Well, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. That's an important kind of mod. But yeah, there you have it. You see some of the tracks contain high voltage. That's how you can see it because of the the dirt. They suck in more dirt. And the layout is done manually. So this was before CAT. And the transformer is <laughs> really, really burning, burning hot. It has been running the whole night. And uh, yes, 10 volt, 2000, and uh, where is the high voltage um, capacitor? So maybe it's just running on pulsating AC, and there isn't any high voltage capacitor or anything. And that probably explains the blinking as well, right? So they're trying to make it uh, as simple as possible. It's really small and compact. Look at that. So after a lot of uh, cleaning, see, nice and shiny. And also this piece of plastic here is nice and shiny. Um, I also found a little problem here. Look at that. They forgot to remove the pins or the connectors in between the high voltage. So of course I removed all these pieces of metal so we can have a proper safety distance to mains because after this was invented and designed back in the old old days we have gotten a little bit wiser over the years and now we know a little bit more about safe distances so this is how you get in and the idea is just take away the plastic and this also gives you access to calibration so now I'll put it all back together and we'll see how nice and beautiful it looks. So now this unit is back together after a lot of uh, cleaning. I don't know, this camera is just really not happy about all this uh, blink. But I got a really, really nice and sharp and shiny and beautiful uh, display. I think it's probably just overdriving the camera or something like that. It looks like there's a 
nasty glow around the digits. It is, but it's, this is not what I see in real life. Look at that, it's overdriving. Really weird. So that is all I wanted to show you. Thank you very much for watching and bye bye.